So um, something that's uh, come across for me um, in the past year, year and a half, is the concept of uh, massive acetaminophen ingestion. And um, there's this uh, old adage that uh, you know, as long as you treat with NAC, uh, which is the antidote, within eight hours, you should be fine um, and should not necessarily expect any uh, adverse outcomes. Now, even still, for the vast majority of uh, acetaminophen cases, like you know, well over 90%, that's true. But there have been cases that I've been involved with that have not uh, turned out well, despite uh, NAC therapy, um, both early and uh, late presenters. So I have no uh, external financial uh, support of their conflicts to declare. Um, so this is a case that uh, Julie, um, one of the new staff here, myself and Dave Olette had uh, overnight at Victoria Hospital in, uh, I want to say aug late August. So it was a 57-year-old male, and I won't go into uh, the intricacies of the case too much beyond what I want to talk about today because I think Julie's going to talk about that at a later time. Um, but this 57-year-old male claimed to have ingested 82.5 grams uh, of acetaminophen. So he came in, and he wasn't your classic histrionic or borderline personality disorder patient. This uh, is an older gentleman. He had a very flat affect, and when he was talking to me, he spoke very matter-of-fact. And I kind of pushed him a little bit, and he said, I took um, uh, 500 milligram acetaminophen tablets, and he took like 164 of them. Uh, and, and I was like, you know, how, why 164? And you kind of push him on the issue, like how difficult was it to take? And he seemed truthful. So what we did was we uh, administered NAC up front um, empirically. We also gave activated charcoal uh, and spoke to Poison Center given the gravity um, and the intensity of the ingestion. So for fun, uh, well not for fun, for educational purposes and just for uh, interest sake, I, I was curious. I'd never done a acetaminophen level or an APAP level. I'll use those terms interchangeably before four hours because the um, the relevance of it is is questioned. Uh, so that's the first level at about one hour, um, and you can see that that's about the four hour level there uh, and 354. So what do you think when you see that you have a 57 year old gentleman who comes in saying I took a massive dose of acetaminophen, um, but his four hour level is well below um, the treatment line. So one of our R1, Sydney, what are you thinking right now? What are your initial thoughts, next steps? Yeah, so the rumac matthew nomogram you can see here, um, you have a 25% uh, window where there's possible hepatotoxicity, but really that, um, that's the line above is where you're most concerned, uh, but there's a little bit of a safety margin there in case the timing is off. So you can see here that this man is claiming to have ingested a whopping acetaminophen uh, dose, essentially an entire bottle, uh, minus a few tablets, but he's well below the treatment threshold at four hours. So that was kind of our inclination as well, just because it's different when you're at the bedside and you're like, I don't know, this. Something about this case seems different to me. Um, so these are the questions that we had for uh, Ontario Poison Center. We said, is there any value in repeating a level? Um, and should we, given the uh, intensity or gravity of this dose, should we consider admission to medicine? Or they said, no, um, stop. Uh, no further uh, NAC therapy, you can discontinue that. No further uh, APAP concentrations. So no need to check uh, the level in the serum, and they can go directly to psych. Um, but there was something different about this case than previous cases. So you can see here the one-hour level, the four-hour level, 
Now the eight hour level is continuing to climb. So classic or er, um, uh, the normal half life for acetaminophen is two to four hours. Um, so you should really be declining, not increasing. So you can see here that when we plot the 12 hour uh, level on the nomogram, they're well above the toxic range. So this was quite a change for us. Um, and this is something we're going to talk about today. So some of the current uh, issues with um, APAP toxicity, um, some of the ones we're going to highlight today are um, identifying patients at risk um, of APAP content or um, toxicity despite APAP concentrations uh, below the treatment threshold, and if I, identifying patients at risk of hepatotoxicity even when you administer NAC. So some of the things we're going to go through are the definition, the changes in the pharmacokinetics and pathophysiology, and the changes in management. Really, why do we care? Uh, what are we going to do about it? So there's no formal definition of um, massive acetaminophen ingestion. You'll see uh, the extrip guidelines, which I'll talk about later, is greater than 500 milligrams per kilogram. You'll remember that a toxic ingestion is considered about 150 to 200 milligrams per kilogram. Uh, so that's quite a drastic increase. But there's uh, several studies in the literature look at greater than 30 grams, greater than 40 grams. Um, so there's no clear uh, unifying definition. But if you're looking for uh, probably the most accurate, it may be 500 milligrams per kilogram or more. So before we get into some of the intricacies and how this differs with a massive ingestion, why don't we just quickly review some of the, um, some of the physiology. So we have the acetaminophen molecule here. Uh, one of the main pathways, you'll see glucuronidation. Again, another pathway, sulfation. And you can see here um, the cytochrome P450, uh, which becomes very important for the generation of NAPT, which is uh, the primary mechanism for um, acetaminophen toxicity in overdose. We talk about NAC therapy, which is primarily, um, oops, sorry. So, So how does NAPT work? Um, NAPT, what it does is it forms covalent bonds with these sulfhydryl groups on cysteine and lysine molecules, and it forms these protein adducts, um, essentially a, a molecule attached to um, a biological protein, um, especially in the mitochondria. And this results in oxidative injury and hepatocellular necrosis, especially, especially in these zones for your central lobular area. So what NAC does, uh, this is important for our exams, is uh, promotes the sulfation pathway. It acts as both a glutathione precursor and a glutathione substrate. Um, it is an antioxidant for reactive oxygen species, and it also improves uh, microcirculation within the, the liver and oxygen delivery uh, to the uh, hepatocytes. But now back to uh, the point of the topic. Things change when it becomes a massive ingestion. And so massive ingestions actually may present early prior to the development of hepatotoxicity with decreased LOC, metabolic acidosis, shock. So these are things to think about when a patient comes in with an altered level of consciousness and you're thinking like, you know, if this wasn't acetaminophen overdose, this would be outside of the window because they would have liver failure, they'd be encephalopathic, um, et cetera. But that's not always the case. And the reason for this is that it acts as a mitochondrial poison in very high doses. So prior to the development of hepatotoxicity, you do get inhib inhibition of oxidative phosphorylation or cellular respiration, um, which results in mitochondrial failure. So some of the altered pharmacokinetics uh, become very important with both duration and um, amount of NAC therapy. So the acetaminophen pharmacokinetics in um, uh, Normal ingestions, uh, so people taking it therapeutically, are, are far more predictable than people that take it in a massive ingestion. Um, there are some different theories on, as to why that is, but just to make you aware that whether there's co-ingestions or whether it's purely acetaminophen that they've ingested on, if it's a massive ingestion, uh, the pharmacokinetics can vary quite a bit. So going through some of the, the evidence for this, there was a uh, case series uh, and a review of the literature whereby three cases of delayed um, acetaminophen peak. So there was not only a delayed peak, but there was also something called a double hump. Has anyone heard of a double hump before? So you, what you have is you have a peak. And, what's that? 
<laughs> nice. Now I know how it feels. <laughs> now I know how it feels to be at the other end of that. Um, so, not only do you have a delayed uh, peak in the rise of so the delayed peak in the acetaminophen concentration, because again, we're expecting the peak to happen well bef or before the four-hour mark. Because if the half-life is four hours, we should start to see a decline prior to that. So not only a delayed peak, but also what you call a double hump. Uh, so what you get is a peak, you get an adir, followed by an additional peak, and then a decline again. Um, all these patients had NAC within six hours, um, and there were nine additional cases that the authors identified in, previously published in the literature uh, with similar double hump and delayed peak um, uh, pharmacology. So no, ingest, no co ingestions were apparent in uh, four of these cases. However, as you know, um, it's based on patient history, talk screens, which were not always 100% reliable, and the reporting of um, uh, these cases in the literature, so whether they even did a urinalysis or not. So with this study, you can see here that there's a significant uh, proportion of patients that had co-ingestions, especially with opiates uh, and antimuscarinics, um, benzodiazepines, things that slow uh, gastric emptying and could very well delay um, the metabolism of acetaminophen. But you can see here that the first peak goes, uh, can be as high as uh, 25 hours post-ingestion, uh, or 41 hours post-ingestion. And again, if you look here at the second peaks, so again, that's that double hump phenomenon that uh, Stoner was telling us about. Um, you can see here 36 hours, 42 hours. So these are, um, again, not, uh, you know, your typical acetaminophen overdose, but these are massive ingestions uh, resulting in different pharmacodynamics. So some of the commonalities, the things that they observed uh, to be uh, similar between these um, acetaminophen ingestions that had the delayed peak in this double hump or, um, uh, pharmacology, they were all large ingestions, oral ingestions. The vast majority, but not all, had co-ingestions, which could potentially delay gastric emptying, so that would affect things. Um, and liver injury was far more common in patients with a second peak. Um, despite therapy within the eight-hour window. So this is a um, case report of a 78-year-old male who ingested 48 grams of acetaminophen. Just to remind you, our case was 82.5 uh, reported. Um, within a one-hour period. NAC was initiated within five hours. Uh, despite this, the patient developed hepatotoxicity, coagulopathy, and renal injury. Now, the patient did recover without sequelae, did not, he did not die, did not require transplantation, but still developed hepatotoxicity, coagulopathy, and renal injury. And you can see here, the initial peak and the delayed hump that we're talking about. So the initial peak, still before uh, 10 hours, but you see that nadir, then you see again the rise uh, beyond uh, the 40 hour mark where you're having that delayed uh, rise in acetaminophen concentration. This patient was hospitalized, so the uh, opportunity for a second ingestion they felt was very low. And you can see here farther right on the graph, um, the ALT and the AST rising. Now, some of the reasons or theories behind this um, of the altered acetaminophen kinetics are one, potential decrease in gastric emptying. So with a large number of acetaminophen tablets in the stomach, it can actually double the gastric emptying half-life. Um, with the large volume, you can have a reduced, or um, uh, the solubility of acetaminophen actually impairs the absorption. So just to give you a reference, the amount of gastric fluid that would be needed to dissolve approximately 100 grams of acetaminophen is approximately, approximately nine liters. So you don't have that in your stomach. So that's one reason, again, why there may be delayed absorption. Um, Pharmacobezoar formation uh, is another uh, potential reason. Uh, enterohepatic circulation uh, and liver injury. So limited ability uh, to break it down uh, and metabolize the acetaminophen. So why do we care and what are the potential implications? So this uh, could potentially Looking at this and looking at some of the pharmacokinetics, 
potentially longer duration of NAC and an increased dose of NAC may be beneficial because if you think of the dosing for NAC, it's essentially, do, are you above the line at four hours? And it's based on weight. There's no uh, reference to the actual amount uh, of ingestion that you took. So the amount is, uh, you know, irrelevant in a certain sense. Uh, and it's essentially based on weight and uh, whether you lie above the line on the nomogram. So some of the changes in management um, that's going to be important for us in the emergency department are increased NAC dosing and duration. Uh, Fomepazole, which was uh, new to me, I hadn't heard of before, and dialysis. And um, we'll talk about some of the um, uh, pitfalls with dialysis. So theoretically, uh, the standard IV NAC dose has been estimated to be sufficient to um, uh, treat uh, an acetaminophen overdose of approximately 16 grams, but it may not be high enough uh, to prevent all liver damage uh, for larger body burdens. And you can see here the first author uh, on this uh, paper was actually Lumac. So the current dose of NAC um, at LHSC First bag is 150 milligrams per kilogram. We do that over an hour. Second bag is 50. Uh, third bag is 100 over 16 hours. And you can see there that the total dose is 300 milligrams per kilogram over a 21 hour period. Now, if you think about it, if you had five half lives of something, you would significantly reduce the concentration of that in your system. So, this 21 or 20 hour duration, um, in part, is based on the fact that you would have, if you have a four hour half life, you would allow for five half-lives to have occurred and potentially have the vast majority of the acetaminophen out of your system by the time the uh, NAC has finished. However, um, a very high early um, APAP concentration or acetaminophen concentration is an independent risk factor for toxicity even if NAC is given within eight hours. So this was a study done by Carney et al. in 2016, where all patients received NAC uh, within eight hours of ingestion. Uh, and the outcome shown here is uh, acute liver injury um, defined as a peak ALT greater than 150 um, that had to have doubled from, the t uh, from that of admission. Um, so here, what you're looking at is um, 0 to 100 is the initial APAP concentration, uh, 100 to 150. 150 is the uh, bottom uh, bar for our, um, if you're thinking about our units. So 150 is just shy of 1,000. It's like 993 or 96. Uh, 150 to 200. 200 is uh, running into that upper bar range. Um, you can see 200 to 300, 300 to 500, and 500. Uh, so what you're seeing on the side of the graph is the percentage um, of the patients in those defined groups that had this uh, definition of acute liver injury. So you can see here that the higher your initial acetaminophen concentration, the uh, higher the chance that you would have uh, resulting uh, acute liver injury uh, despite NAC therapy within uh, eight hours. There was a study done by Chu in 2017. This was an observational study of 200 patients. Uh, they defined a massive ingestion of 40 grams of acetaminophen or more. Um, the median <laughs> dose ingested was 50 grams. Um, and the intermediate release tablet, so, or sorry, immediate release tablet, these were not uh, long acting, had to be ingested within eight hours. So what they looked at for outcomes was they looked at the acetaminophen ratio, uh, which you can see defined there. Um, and what they used the acetaminophen ratio to do was essentially compare patients with uh, acetaminophen concentrations in the serum at different time points. So it was kind of a uh, reference um, or a way to normalize it. And the second was hepatotoxicity. So by hepatotoxicity, this is not acute liver injury. This is hepatotoxic with an ALT above 1,000. You can see here that we started with 200. Um, and then what I want you to focus on is the right side. So you can see here that you went down to 173. And over here on the right side is 79. So with that acetaminophen ratio or paracetamol, depending on what side of the ocean you're on, uh, greater than or equal to 2. So these are your massive ingestions. So you have 43 that had an increased dose of acetylcysteine in the first 21 hours. Um, and you have 36 that just required uh, standard. And this, again, was not randomized. This was uh, retrospective observational. Um, so 36 of those patients 
that had this massive ingestion um, and had an ALT that was not elevated on presentation, 10 of those resulted in hepatotoxicity, whereas four of the 43 resulted in hepatotoxicity uh, with the increased uh, acetylcysteine dosing. So what they showed or observed, I should say, is that an increased NAC dosage resulted in a significantly decreased risk of hepatotoxicity, 9.3% versus 27.8% with an odds ratio of 0.27. Um, now you can see here fairly wide confidence interval. Um, obviously, the uh, larger number of patients you have, the better, but um, with toxicology, sometimes you uh, literally have to take what you get. Um, and so they were looking at cases that were already present uh, in a database. The odds ratio was similar after adjusting for time to NAC. Um, and six patients developed hepatotoxicity despite treatment within the eight hours um, in this study. This is another study, um, a case series by Doyen et al. in 2009. And what the inclusion criteria were, an uh, acetaminophen concentration above, on or above the uh, nomogram line, uh, administration of NAC, IV NAC, within eight hours of ingestion, and you had to have follow-up to a known outcome, so they couldn't be lost to therapy. And what you're looking at here is the two groups. So these are there's 77 patients total. 70 patients there in the first group had normal uh, liver enzymes and an undetectable uh, acetaminophen concentration at 21 hours, so after the standard NAC therapy had been administered. What you're looking at here on the right is patients with either an elevated, uh, either elevated liver enzymes or uh, plasma concentrations um, of acetaminophen uh, at 21 hours um, that were still elevated. So some of the characteristics uh, that I just wanted to draw your attention to were uh, the difference in percentage of combination products, so 25 versus, um, or sorry, 35% versus 85.7%, um, and as well the uh, plasma APAP concentration, so the time to max, so the time to the peak acetaminophen concentration for the patient's that were, uh, had an unremarkable blood work at 21 hours was four and a half, which is what we'd expect. But the patients um, that did have elevated liver enzymes or remained, uh, the acetaminophen concentration remained elevated at 21 hours, the mean uh, time to uh, max level was 15.4 hours. So you can see that's quite a difference, uh, 4.5 hours to 15.4 uh, hours. So this is a um, uh, trimmed down version of the table. And again, just looking at these seven patients that after 21 hours did have abnormalities in the blood work, be it with the liver enzymes or the acetaminophen concentration, showing you can see here that the plasma acetaminophen level was uh, quite elevated. Again, these are uh, American units, not Canadian, unfortunately. But significant number of co-ingestions. The first patient actually um, uh, had to receive a liver transplant. Uh, patients two through four uh, developed hepatotoxicity uh, despite uh, NAC therapy. Um, and the uh, second patient in this uh, case actually passed, uh, actually died. Um, they uh, overdosed on acetaminophen and diphenhydramine. And you can see here the total duration of NAC therapy goes well beyond the uh, 21 hours. And I should mention that in patients two through four, the NAC therapy was prolonged and uninterrupted. <clears throat> this is a comparison of uh, some selected studies uh, evaluating NAC in um, acute acetaminophen overdoses with plasma concentrations on or above uh, the upper line on the nomogram. And you can see here that in uh, the current study, uh, about 9.8% develop hepatotoxicity despite NAC therapy, 0% um, in the Prescott study, 3%. 10%, 6.1%. So clearly not the majority, but still a minority of patients that we need to have in the back of our minds and think about. This was an interesting study where uh, they were looking at uh, stage four melanoma, and uh, they were looking at uh, using massive doses of acetaminophen to reduce the glutathione stores and potentially kill uh, the, uh, the cancer cells, essentially using it like chemotherapy. Um, but what they would do is they would give this massive acetaminophen dose, and you can see here that, I'm not sure how you calculate the dose, but grams per meter squared, they did 10, 15, and 20. And just to show you that these are the peak levels, um, 
in those different groups. So to kind of give you a reference point, these are our units here. And just to let you know, 1,000 is where the cutoff is uh, for our um, normal gram using our units. So that 20 grams per meter squared is double um, the, uh, the line at which we would treat. And so what they did was they administered this high dose of acetaminophen. Um, about six hours, six and a half hours later, they would administer the chemotherapeutic agent. And then at around seven, seven and a half hours, they would administer um, NAC therapy. So within the eight hours, uh, and these were uh, very specific doses, and the times were very reliable. And you can see here the different doses displayed on the graph. So what they observed was, um, despite the NAC being administered within the eight hours and the timing being reliable, the dose also being reliable, um, that two patients uh, developed grade four um, hepatotoxicity. Um, one patient developed uh, prolonged clotting time and one patient developed uh, encephalopathy. So two of the five patients that received that higher dose, 20 grams per meter squared, um, with standard NAC rescue at six to eight hours, experience, did experience uh, grade three encephalopathy, or sorry, grade three aminotransferase um, elevations, which were greater than five to 20 times the upper limit of normal for the aminotransferase. Um, and what I wanted to point out too was that the minimum rescue, the minimum NAC rescue that they used was 472.5 milligrams per kilogram over 20 hours, whereas our dosing is 300 over 21 hours. So still, um, they had an increased dose, and despite that, uh, there were people that developed uh, consequences. So Australia in 2015 um, came out with um, a guideline that said, you know, those who ingest, ma those who have massive ingestions of acetaminophen may be at increased risk of hepatotoxicity despite treatment, um, and they may benefit from modifying the standard uh, NAC therapy. However, who might benefit from this is really not clear. So essentially identifying that there are a subset of patients that may not fall within our standard treatment, um, but we don't really know who those are yet. And what they suggested was, if the acetaminophen concentration is over double the nomogram line, so our nomogram line we're looking at is about 1,000. So if it's the uh, APAP concentration, you get it in the four hour mark and it's 2,000 or above, then what you do is you would double the concentration of NAC in your third bag. So you remember the first bag was for an hour, that was 150 uh, milligrams per kilogram, the second was 50 milligrams per kilogram, that was four hours, and the third bag is really the long bag, which is the 16 hour therapy, and it's 100 milligrams per kilogram. So what you do is you would increase that to 200 milligrams per kilogram. And you think like, well, why do I care? The patient's not even gonna be in the emergency department at this time. If this patient comes in at seven, eight, nine o'clock at night, um, and it's seen by the SMR, um, treated overnight. They may not round with the staff until the following morning at 10, 10.30, and they may not be aware of um, some of these uh, intricacies in therapy. And I would say that for uh, some of the more difficult uh, um, toxic, uh, toxicologic cases that we often call poison center, but for something routine like acetaminophen, it's not always done. Another thing to consider is fomepazole. So this is something that uh, Dave Allette had brought up and I, I had never heard about. Um, and the reason why fomepazole um, is theorized to work or has been shown um, in certain uh, scenarios to work is that it's a CYP2E1 inhibitor. So it's a very potent CYP2E1 inhibitor. And CYP2E1 is one of those cytochrome enzymes and it's actually one of the main cytochrome enzymes um, that are involved in NAPQ generation. So if you think that you have this massive acetaminophen ingestion, and then you're breaking that acetaminophen down, and you're, you've saturated the pathways, you've generated NAPQ, now you have this massive um, uh, deficit in glutathione stores. So what the fomepazole could potentially do is reduce the NAPQ burden while you're building up your glutathione stores with uh, your NAC therapy. And so fomepazole was um, shown to reduce NAPQ generation, um, and it was comparable in efficacy to NAC therapy in a rat model. So it was actually comparable to NAC therapy with massive acetaminophen, or with acetaminophen overdose in a rat model, and also with an in vitro uh, human hepatocytes, so not, uh, not in vivo, not a clinical trial. The dosing, um, albeit this may be a bit of an overkill, 
uh, in dosing, you may not actually need 15 milligrams per kilogram, but just to keep it simple, what you could do is 15 milligrams per kilogram um, over 30 minutes, which is actually the same dose that we use for the toxic alcohols. And the final therapy um, that I want to talk to you about is uh, dialysis. And the reason um, that I put up this slide is anytime I, I spoke to Nephro about dialyzing um, a toxin, there, there are times when they're hesitant. And um, I understand that we look at patients or problems from different angles, but especially with acetaminophen overdose. So we wanted to call, the question was, this patient had a massive ingestion. We were concerned about uh, potential sequelae, you know, not four hours from now, but 10, 20 hours from now. And we wanted to know whether we may benefit from gastric lavage. Um, but if we had nephrology on board that would be willing to dialyze, should it come to it, we thought maybe we could hold off. So we contacted nephrology up front, uh, and the nephrology R5 fellow said they'd never heard of um, uh, acetaminophen or uh, dialysis for acetaminophen toxicity. They talked to their staff. Their staff had also never heard of it, um, and I think they um, were upset with poison control for recommending it. And, and this is not the first time that this kind of dance has happened. Um, there were three uh, deaths um, within a month last year in the MSICU. However, those were not your acute presenting within eight hours. Uh, they did present with um, some hepatotoxicity. Um, but even then, nephrology, despite Poison Center's recommendation to dialyze, is extremely hesitant to do so. And um, there are several staff, um, be it intensivists, uh, internists, um, emergency medicine physicians that um, don't think about dialysis or, or don't believe in it as a therapy. So, so one thing that came up, um, Morgan was actually giving us a talk on uh, intro to uh, toxicology. And I said, how, is there any uh, good evidence that you found um, that I can, that we can use to have this discussion with our nephrology colleagues. And so she brought up something called the XTRIP uh, guidelines, an XTRIP work group. Um, so just to show you, it's very simple. We type it into Google, be the first thing that pops up um, and something that you can uh, have nephrology do uh, when you're talking to them over the phone. So I, I'm just gonna have to read this quick. The extracorporeal um, treatment in poisoning working group, I believe. Um, and what they are are a multidisciplinary team from around the globe that includes toxicologists, um, intensivists, emergency physicians, nephrologists. And what they do is they review the literature um, and they uh, discuss and present guidelines and the evidence for uh, some of the recommendations based on uh, a number of toxins. And you can see acetaminophen up at the top there. So what their guidelines are for dialysis um, uh, extracorporeal um, removal, so uh, be it IHD, Prisma, um, SLED, whatever your method is, um, is one, if NAC is not administered um, and the APAP is more than, you can see the upper number there where there's more evidence, or 5,300. Again, number two is if NAC is not administered and the APAP level at four hours is greater than uh, 3,300, sorry, 3,300. Now, more relevant for us is when NAC is administered. So if NAC is administered and the pr patient presents with an altered mental status, metabolic acidosis, elevated lactate, and the acetaminophen concentration is greater than uh, 5,300, then that would be their recommendation to consider uh, dialysis. And you can see here that the grade of evidence does vary with um, the level. When it's not suggested, is purely on the basis of the reported ingestion. So someone saying, I took an entire bottle. They would not recommend uh, empiric dialysis for that. Um, solely on the basis of uh, the initial acetaminophen concentration. Um, and it would uh, not be also recommended if um, the, uh, I think I already mentioned that. So essentially a simple way to do this because we're all going to give NAC therapy um, don't forget about your charcoal with um, massive acetaminophen ingestion or just acetaminophen overdose for that matter. But what the dialysis pathway would look like for us if NAC is being administered would be you have signs of mitochondrial failure. So early coma, increased lactate, metabolic acidosis. If yes, then is the acetaminophen concentration at your four hour mark greater than 5,300? If yes, and there's no hepatic dysfunction, so indicating this is an acute ingestion, 
and this is prior to um, hepatic uh, uh, necrosis, then you would consider dialysis. And the way to go about that would be to talk to poison control, mention that this is what you're thinking about, and then discuss with nephrology with the uh, recommendation from poison control. And we often do that up front. If they say that it's that large of an ingestion, um, poison control will, and has said to us, uh, based on the extra guidelines, we would recommend dialysis if you visualize that these uh, signs in the future. And that's an easier conversation to have with uh, our colleagues, um, uh, our dialysis colleagues, because then it's not only extra guidelines, but it's also coming from uh, the Ontario Poison Center. So some things that I wanted to summarize were patients with massive ingestion can present early with a decreased uh, level of consciousness and metabolic acidosis prior to the development of hepatotoxicity. That despite an effective antidote, patients with a single massive acetaminophen ingestion do occasionally suffer hepatotoxicity, um, require liver transplant, uh, transplantation, or die despite treatment within eight hours. I came across two case reports of patients who died uh, within with massive acetaminophen ingestion um, that received NAC therapy within eight hours, and despite that, um, died, and one received uh, transplant. Um, now, the two that died also had concomitant ingestions with uh, diphenhydramine, so that is a bit of a confounder. So what can we do? Um, one, we can think about increased NAC dosing. The most common uh, way to increase your NAC dosing within the 21 hours is just to double the concentration of the last bag. So go from 100 milligrams per kilogram in your last bag to 200 milligrams per kilogram. And it's um, on power chart. Um, when you go in the standard uh, module, you just click on the concentration in the last bag and change it. Very simple. Um, another is flumepazole. Um, the evidence for this obviously isn't great, and it's something you can talk to the toxicologist about uh, in the Ontario Poison Center, but something to definitely consider. Um, dialysis is another um, concern. Sometimes the problem with dialysis is when these patients are um, shocky, unwell, and this is often kind of later in the presentation, that if they're truly like uh, shocky, hypotensive, then starting them on dialysis um, becomes further problematic because that um, can worsen the shock. Um, there are other indications for dialysis despite the uh, acetaminophen level and signs of mitochondrial failure, things like renal failure, um, electrolyte imbalance, acidosis, refractory to medical therapy, these are things that can come up as well. And don't forget about the Ontario Poison Center. These are the references. So I will say um, a bit of a not a dry topic, it's an interesting topic, but going through some of the individual cases, it's almost like building an argument to say, like, uh, believe me that like it happens, uh, because there's a lot um, of uh, physicians from many different specialties that would question that, um, that statement, that as long as you're, um, you know, like, I, I'm fine. If I treat within eight hours, I have no concerns. So there are certain cases where that may not always be the case. That's not the majority but it's something that we should have in the back of our minds.